Hey everybody. Okay, so welcome to one of this week's videos. <laughs> um, okay, so this one's going to be about the short essay. Sorry, my eye itches. Um, so here's what I'm going to tell you about the short essays. They are much easier than you think that they are. Okay, so don't overthink them. Um, oh shoot, I forgot I can't do that. Uh, try not to overthink it. Okay, I pinky promise they are really not that bad. Um, okay, so over the course of the semester, you are doing three short essays, and my hope is that you can utilize this video to refer back to if necessary when we, you know, get into the second and third one. Your first one is on The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, um, and that is going to be due Friday, October 2nd, okay? So Friday, October 2nd is your first one. Yes, sorry, I wanted to make sure I was looking at the right date on my calendar. <laughs> Um, okay, so here is the rubric. This is uploaded under um, the modules week, uh, whatever week that is. I'm sorry, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, is this it? Week five. Okay, sorry. Um, anyway. It should be under week five. It'll also be under the folder in files. So you'll go to files, you'll click the folder rubrics, and this will be there. Okay, so let's go over it. So over the course of the semester, you'll complete three short essays, one on metamorphosis, another on Frederick Douglass's speech, What to the Slave in the 4th of July, and lastly, one on William Shakespeare's play, The Taming of the Shrew. The purpose is to begin to familiarize with this type of writing style, along with writing to kind of an imaginary audience. Um, we have to also be able to switch our writing style from informal to formal. And keep in mind that this means that you are dropping the first and second person perspective or point of view. So we are no longer putting I, me, we, you. Watch the you's. Remember to utilize the terms they, them, their, or persons or people. Okay. Um, just something to keep in mind with that. So, yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, we haven't done anything today, and I feel like I've done a thousand things. So I'm exhausted. It's cool. Um, it's a great part of being pregnant. <laughs> so anyway, so this is much more of an essay, less of a reader response, so you're not inserting your opinion. That doesn't mean that you can't. It means that you have to figure out how to input your opinion without speaking from the first person. Okay, so how do I say, you know, my point of view is without saying my point of view is. Okay, so it's just something to think of um, as you're switching over to this formal style of writing. You're going to address a central theme, motif, symbol, or character and analyze it or them. You have to craft a thesis statement. The thesis statement is what drives your paper, okay? It is the point that you are trying to prove throughout your paper, all right? It is a main idea um, about the text, okay? So I do give you some topics to choose from, which honestly, you can just kind of change the question into a statement and bam, you've got a thesis. Um, anyway, so you are doing this in three to five pages, double space, Times New Roman, 12 point font, one inch margins, you know, the same as I've been telling you. Um, so you're going to choose a topic. You do not have to choose from the list that I provided. I do that as a courtesy so that you don't have to try to think too hard on it. Um, especially being that we're virtual, we don't get to talk about the topics much in class. And since we're asynchronous, we don't actually have class <laughs> to discuss. So use, I encourage and expect you to use textual evidence, which means that you are quoting the text itself, we have already gone over MLA, so at this point you know or should know or should be able to reference back to all of the MLA documents to be able to properly cite. If you have a question, you have, I mean, you do have quite some time at this point to um, ask me those questions to make sure that you do them correctly. No one's there. Oh, look, you can see me. Is it a kernel? Okay, go put it in the garbage. Don't eat that. Why? Because it's going to hurt your teeth. Go spit it out. No, I'm telling you, you're going to break your teeth. Okay, do what you need to do. He's eating popcorn. They don't want to see that. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. 
anyway, okay, so like I said, your first short essay on the metamorphosis is due Friday, October 2nd, then the next one is the following week, and then you have quite a lengthy break until your next one, okay, your last one. All right, here is the rubric for how I'm grading you. Pretty standard, your intro, your, fo your focus on your topic, meaning that you're not running off on tangents, um, and then the support, are you using quotes or not? If you're using textual evidence, then obviously you're gonna get an exemplary. If you're not, then you're gonna need, you're gonna be either in needs improvement or not evident. Conclusion, and then of course, your writing and mechanics, okay? So for your first one, which is due October 2nd, again, for the metamorphosis, uh, your topics are, how do Gregor's feelings for his family change over the course of the story? What is the major conflict and is it re resolved? How is Gregor's metamorphosis similar to Greta's and how does it differ? And then Kafka grants readers access to Gregor's thoughts, but we only learn about the other characters through what he sees, hears, and infers. How does this perspective affect the reader's understanding of the story? Okay, so that's for the metamorphosis. And as I said, um, oh, whoops. Uh, sorry. Um, the next one is going to be on what to the slave is the 4th of July, which is a speech given by Frederick Douglass. I swear I can talk. A speech given by Frederick Douglass in 18, 1850, 52, 1854, around that time. Um, but he would not, he refused to give it on the 4th. He gave it on the 5th because he would not do it on the white man's holiday. Um, so, here are some of your topic choices. What is the ethos, pathos, and logos behind the speech? Why did he refuse to speak on July 4th? Now this has a, um, an actual answer, and I just gave it to you really. Um, but this is also one that you can find easily on the internet as to why he did this. Okay, why did he choose instead to deliver the speech on the 5th? However, it's your job to find in his speech those reasons, okay? So, that for these, these listed reasons throughout his speech, this is why he wasn't gonna do it on the fourth, um, so on and so forth, okay? And then your last topic for that is analyze the language and eloquence in which Douglas uses. Remember that I'm not making you read his autobiography. It's very good if you ever choose to pick something up. Um, he learned how to read and write on his own. He was not taught at a school. He used to trick little white schoolboys into teaching him how to write his letters on a fence post. He also learned from um, Irish dock workers how to do it. Um, but again, this was all by trickery. He was very smart, very deceitful, and he learned how to read and write this way. Um, and he eventually bought his way into freedom. So how does a slave who is essentially supposed to not be taught to read and write how does he become such an eloquent speaker and writer? Okay, what do we learn about the language that he uses? Okay, and then finally, your last, last short essay, which will be due not until November, um, The Taming of the Shrew, which if you are familiar with the, um, the film, The 10 Things I Hate About You, then you already know the play. Pretty cool. So how do gender roles um, affect the attitudes of the characters how do these roles surface in the play? Most of the men seem to have a particular idea about how a wife should behave, but do their preconceptions extend to all women or only their wife, okay? How do the women react to these expectations? Are the women systematically oppressed or do they subtly balance the men's power? Okay, I know that's a lot, but it's there. It's all about gender roles, okay? The next one plays essentially a comedy, yet more serious questions about social issues often overshadow its comic features. How does humor function in the play? Note especially the two wooing scenes by Petruchio and Lucentio. Why does Shakespeare include so many of the play's best comic devices in these scenes? So that you might actually have to research some things. Examine the characters of Hortensio and Gremio. Why do they fail where Petruchio and Lucentio succeed? Does their failure stem from their reasons for wanting to get married or from other facets of their personalities? Obviously, you know, at this time that you're seeing this video, you have no idea what I'm talking about and that's okay. We'll get there. This is really just for you to be able to reference again. Um, last one. Yes, right, last one. Okay. In general, the, play, the plots of Shakespeare's plays 
follow a certain pattern in which act three contains a major turning point in the action, an event that inevitably leads to the climax of action and the wrap up of plot lines in the fifth and final act. How does the play conform to or deviate from this pattern? How substantially do the events of the third act, the marriage scene between Petruchio and Kate and the wooing scene between Lucentio and Bianca affect the action of the rest of the play? Now, another potential topic that I could give you is to compare and contrast slash analyze the uh, portrayal of the film, The 10 Things I Hate About You, to this play. Because it is a modern adaptation of the play. Um, I know it was done in the 90s, <laughs> we're so old. Uh, but it is a very good representation of it. And they do give very similar speeches. Um, so you could compare and contrast that. You can analyze like who did it better. Um, does the movie adaptation of this play accurately represent what Shakespeare was trying to get at? Okay. So again, these, these essays are very easy once you choose a topic. Okay. And then just so that we're all clear, we're going to do this together. Okay. You need to have a heading and a header. All right, so your heading is your name. Whoops, not you. <laughs> your name, my name. If I could spell today, that'd be great. Apparently I can't spell or talk. Um, you can either choose the class or the assignment. I don't really care. And then you put the date, okay? So that is your heading. That is a heading. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna just if I can figure this shit out, that'd be great. Shape, how do I, there it is. Okay, here we go. Yep, I'll make it a little bigger, why not? There we go. Heading, okay? Now your header, if you're in Microsoft Word, um, you can do it two different ways. You can double click up here for your header, or you can go to insert, page number, top of page, you choose plane number three, okay, there's your number, and then you just type your front, your last name in front of the number, okay? And that, my friends, here we go, because I just love to do these things. Whoops, can I flippy this? Yes, I can. Swoopy swoop, yep. There we go. That is your heading. I know this is really shitty and I'm sorry. Um, we'll just, we'll drag that. There we go. Okay, so this is your heading. If you're using Google Docs, you do the same idea, insert page number, um, and then you find the one on the top right. Okay, and then again, put your cursor in front of it and type your last name. That's it. Okay, there is no title page. I do not want a title page. The only time in this class you'll be doing a title page is when it comes to your final portfolio. That is it no title page, okay? So again, I expect your heading and I expect your header. However, this all needs to be in Times New Roman font, size 12, okay? And I just fucked up everything, sorry. I have a sailor mouth. Why is it saying I spelled that wrong? Okay, and then right after this, you enter one time, you center it, and you give yourself a title. Then you enter it again one time, left hand margin, indent once, and you start to type your paper. I know this seems really, really uh, rudimentary. However, shit, I can't spell. However, you'd be amazed at how many people don't do this for me. Um, and then of course, you're gonna always make sure that everything is double spaced, so control two. Okay, and that's it. Then you got, you're off to the races, okay? And your work cited page is its own page. It is not at the bottom of your, you know, let's say that your, your paper ends at the top of page five. Work cited does not start on that page five. It would start on page six, okay? So that in a nutshell is your short essay. Seems pretty easy, right? I think so. Yeah. All right, so if you have questions on this short essay, you can shoot me a text. You can refer back to this um, each time that you need to write your short essay. Um, 
hopefully it's helpful. I would assume it's helpful, but who, who knows? I don't know. So, um, all right. See you guys in the next video. Bye guys.